Welcome to July Said News. My name is Rob. And today, just like the thumbnail and title suggest, there's some things that concern me. And one of those things are clawbacks. And there was actually a really good video uh, that was put out by a friend of the show, CTO Larson. And CTO, uh, he had on uh, a Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy lawyer and expert. Uh, her name is uh, Deborah Debkovsky Ipop. And she is representing uh, one of the ad hoc groups for Celsius, I believe, uh, some of the ones that are in custody. Uh, not in custody in jail, but uh, as far as like custody, as far as their accounts versus earn versus pure custody and muddled custody. And I've watched this video probably three times now. And it concerned me because of the clawbacks and the things that are going to potentially happen and change uh, our industry. And one of the things that, that she talked about, I think that was, uh, was pretty interesting. And she said a couple of things and uh, she's actually going to be on the show tomorrow. So I wanted to watch this, this interview to get a, a feel of what uh, to ask and to not repeat the same things. And there's a couple of things that she said that was uh, again, quite interesting. She says that she's rarely gone after non insider preferences or clawbacks. You know what clawbacks are essentially if you took out any of your crypto and any of your funds from Celsius within 90 days, uh, the group, the debtors, they have their uh, option to claw that back legally. And that's not just people in the United States. That's people outside the U.S. as well. And uh, she said that uh, usually she doesn't go after uh, non-insiders, uh, meaning uh, people like us. Usually uh, that doesn't move the needle as much as uh, the uh, debtors would like. And they usually take a look at the insiders first and the millions that they essentially take and go from there. Also, she said that uh, insiders, uh, unlike us, we can, they can only go back 90 days. Uh, for insiders, they can go back one year for clawbacks. So if uh, Alex Mashinsky and the, uh, and the crew did something a little bit crazy, uh, they can go back for a year. And then she said that because uh, she was involved in, I mean, she's been, a, there were a lot of different uh, chapter 11s, but she talked about during the Bernie Madoff Ponzi that the people that withdrew within 90 days for whatever reason, and they didn't, and, and they were established as they didn't understand or they didn't know that it was actually a Ponzi, they just, just dumb luck. They said for those people, uh, they only had to pay back the profits and not the initial investment. I thought that was fascinating that people who had no idea as there was a Ponzi scheme, which I think we can, uh, from what some documentations have stated, Celsius looks like it potentially had been a Ponzi scheme. Uh, people didn't know. And in the Bernie Madoff, they had to just give back their profits, not their initial investment. And then another thing she talked about was, and I think this is the most scary, which is what we're going to talk about today and why I did what I did. She said, if, if you moved one Bitcoin between Celsius, and you're like, well, that's shutting down. I got to take it to someplace else. I'll move it to Voyager. And then Voyager, for some reason, you, you get lucky. You watch one of my videos and go, okay, I got to take it off there. You take it to FTX. And you do this all within 90 days of them shutting down withdrawals and going to bankruptcy, that one Bitcoin, you would be on the hook for three Bitcoins because you're moving it in between each different centralized platform. And if that doesn't scare you, eh, not much will. So that got me to thinking about what if that happens to us? Because look, we always talk about the same thing, don't we? We always say, you know, there's, there's the rules. The rules are very simple and you can do whatever you want, but, uh, I just say, if you're going to invest, assume that it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until pro otherwise. And don't leave anything on exchanges. Take them and put them into your cold storage wallet. But we all need exchanges, don't we? And if we all need exchanges because we, we have this, this fiat, this money, we want to exchange it into crypto, well, we need an exchange. Well, what if we keep getting screwed like this for every 90 days? And it just keeps like a domino effect. And all the funds that we put in there just go away. So these rules are not really helping us too much. And then, of course, don't use leverage and take profits, right? So I thought to myself, well, there's got to be a better option. And somebody in uh, one of the live streams said, you know, Rob, you can use your debit card on Uniswap, which is a decentralized exchange, which would, of course, yes, link to your bank. And you can buy crypto. And I go, well, tell me more. And I, I very simply, this is how it's done. Uh, you go to app.uniswap.org. This is what I did. And then you connect your wallet, whatever that is. I use MetaMask wallet. And if you don't know how to do that, that's okay. I got you covered. There's this website. It's 100% free. It will always be free. 
it's Dan teaches crypto. And if you go down to module five, how do I, and click on that, it says, how do I use the MetaMask wallet? And I show you step-by-step -step how to do it. So anyhow, so you connect your MetaMask wallet and see where it says buy crypto right there, buy crypto. And you start the process. So you're going to use this, this platform called MoonPay. And when I did it, I first put in my credit card. And they said, if you use a credit card, it likely won't go through and they will deny it because financial institutions. I go, okay. So just so you know, that's how it's going to work. So you can put in your credit card, but then I switched to my debit. And it's going to ask you for your billing address. It's going to ask for your expiration date, your card security code, all that stuff, right? So now it knows your address. And then it's going to ask you to verify your bank account because I use my debit card. So they sent me X amount of, it was, it was a dollar and some change. I had to go to my bank account. I had to verify the account and then say, okay, you're good. Then it's going to give me a verification number on my cell phone. Oh, man. And from that, they're going to ask me to say, okay, well, this is the piece. And now we're going to ask you for your social security number. And from the social security number, they're going to have all this data and all this information. And then it's going to say like this. After this, it's going to say, okay, are you, are you legit? I am buying without external help or guidance. Yes, you are. And then after all is said and done, it's going to say, here's your Visa debit card. This is where we're going to send it to. And I picked, I want to spend $150 and move it to ETH. And I agreed to the terms. And here's the terms. And I put this in so, so you don't have to. Zero hash liquidity. This is zero hash services from MoonPay. Uh, this shall dictate the terms applicable to you as noted below. Track your crypto transactions. Just so you know, this is what they're going to do. They're going to track your crypto, P2P transaction, and host a wallet through the platform or through the zero hash system. And also, they're going to track all this because they have rules and regulations. And as it, at its sole discretion, it may add a spread to each crypto transaction executed by you in the platform or through the zero hash system. And the execution price is not meant to imply the market price. So after all that is said and done, and you agree to all this stuff, it's going to that $150 that I spent, it gave me 0 0.0891 ETH. I said, I want $150 worth of ETH. And what they gave me was $140. So that's roughly a spread uh, and fees and services of roughly around 6%. So if you can stomach that, that's how it all works. Now, would you be susceptible to clawbacks and things like that? I don't think so, unless your central bank becomes insolvent. But if it does, there's these things called FDIC insurance and it is regulated. And that's one of the, the benefits of that. So that's it. I just uh, wanted to show everybody how it's done. So there's some trade-offs. And some people say, well, that's pretty steep, Rob. And you are right, it is steep. That's what MoonPay does. However, you know what's steeper? The fee of 100% from FTX and the fee of 100% from Celsius and the fee of 100% from Voyager and BlockFi. That's the real steep price. And that's it. So that's all we have for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. Now we're just gonna go into the little chat session. I'll answer some questions, all that good stuff, and then we'll get out of here. So